we are good to go. Thank you so much. Um, good evening. It is April 19th and it is 6.05 p.m. I'd like to call the Ad Hoc Affordable Housing Committee of the Common Council to order. Um, we will start with roll call. Um, we have Chairperson Nicole Ayers, who's experiencing some technical difficulties. Um, we have Nora Najelski eichner here and um, myself, Jen McMurr. Everybody else is currently absent. I will make note of that if they come on to the meeting. Um, do we have anybody here for public participation? I'm not seeing any hands raised. We do have three attendees. Okay, great. If anybody would like to participate, can you please just raise your hand? We'll give you one second and then we'll move on. Okay, seeing none, um, I will close public participation. Um, we have one item we need to move, but we don't have a quorum. So we'll move the minutes to the next meeting. Um, it's just to approve the minutes from the last month's meeting. And that brings us to our presentation from the city staff on affordable housing. So I will turn that over to you guys. Thanks, Mr. Kleppen. No problem. Okay. Everybody can see that, right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So the good news is it's a short presentation. So Brevity will be the, the name of the game tonight. Um, so we just wanted to chat with you for a little bit about some of the things that are kind of like more on the, the forefront of initiatives that we're uh, working on in terms of affordable housing. Um, just a little bit of background from the, the uh, 2019 uh, citywide plan. Uh, you kind of, there, there was a whole section on housing uh, and it touched on you know all aspects of housing, not just affordable housing, um, but some relevant points. Um, kind of for, I think, what, what you guys are talking about and, and have been talked about in other areas of the city as well, is trying to increase the, the amount of affordable housing, making sure that the, you know, affordable housing is, you know, distributed equitably throughout the city, having different housing types um, and, and locating that housing at the appropriate locations, whether that's, um, you know, what we've been talking a lot about lately is, locating uh, more density towards transit, near our infrastructure, uh, near our job bases. So that's some of the things we're working at with the zoning regulations, um, as well as looking at things like the types of housing. So it's more options. We, we had a long discussion, you know, at the council level, also with the planning and zoning commission level about ADUs. We're talking now about with the new zoning regulations, how to add some of that missing middle housing, which is the two to four and even a little bit of larger development. So we're working on some different things in that regard uh, that we think lines up pretty well with the goals of the POCD. The two main initiatives at the moment uh, working on, on the housing front are two different programs. One, working on an overall housing plan through um, ULI, which is the Urban Land Institute. They're going to be coming in and doing a three-day workshop sometime, we're thinking um, early September. And the, the program is going to bring in um, some national experts. So ULI has uh, local experts, but they also have the ability to bring in national experts. And we're hoping they're going to be do some, you know, kind of digging in and evaluation of some of our programs, piggybacking on the affordable housing plan, which is about to start off. And they're going to evaluate, you know, you know, basically a second set of eyes on that, and then guide us through um, kind of like the educational and outreach piece of that, which, you know, the affordable housing plan is going to be very data driven plan. So looking at, you know, the existing housing stock, um, looking at that stock and saying, you know, what are the shortfalls based on the needs that we're seeing, which is based on cens uh, census data in speaking with um, the housing authority and other um, nonprofits that provide affordable housing. And, and trying to see where, where, where are the areas that were short and what areas do we need to focus on and what are the best regulatory and policy approaches that the city can undertake to achieve those goals. Um, we talked about last night a lot at the, um, the Ordinance Committee of Council about the, um, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund and you know, what that program aims to get at. And that's kind of lines up with the zoning regulations, which has the provision for the workforce housing. So that's one mechanism that zoning looks at. Uh, I don't think zoning is the answer to all the issues related to affordable housing, but it's one vehicle and one mechanism. 
Um, so what are the other uh, avenues that the city can undertake that it's not currently doing, or what can we do with our current programs to better improve on and you know, meet the needs of the communities? That's what the, the answers we're trying to get at with these two different fronts. Um, so just a little bit in terms of uh, timeline, uh, we just signed the contract last week with AKRF, who's the firm doing the affordable housing fund. And I think at the last, last month at council, they approved the uh, AKRF funding. So we're hoping to do kickoff meetings with the um, AKRF very soon. So the first step is kind of, I think we just set up a meeting today. Staff is going to talk to them next week or the week after just to try to get a little bit organized. And again, when you do any one of these studies, there's a lot of uh, background and catch up that the consultants need to do. So they need to you know, familiarize themselves with all the, the city plans and efforts that have been done to date, as well as do a, a dig in on the data that's out there. So they, they have to really get to know the community. Um, with the eye moving forward, where ULI will be working on their, um, their program over that same time period, utilizing a lot of the data that AKRF is putting together. So I think that the, the two efforts piggyback well. Um, and then you can see on the graph, what we're thinking is that the, the draft zoning regulations, there's a good chance we can move towards an approval sometime toward the end of September. That's a flexible time frame, just based on what we start to see from the, the, the public input and how much additional work, if any, we need to go back and do. Uh, and while that's all going on, that will kind of feed into that draft zoning. And then down the road, if there's additional changes that come out of either the ULI study or the AKRF study, we can tweak the zoning regulations after the fact if we need to adjust anything in terms of the affordable housing um, provisions within the regulations. And my guess is it's also going to lead to some different policy changes on the city side as well. So that's kind of, like I said, was going to be um, a very brief overview because I'm sure you're going to have some questions. Um, again, a little, just a little bit next steps, as I mentioned. Um, ULI is starting to, you know, just come on board now. AKRF just signed their contract. We'll probably have an advisory committee that gets put together pretty soon, which we anticipate having a kickoff meeting in May. Um, and then, you know, a, uh, ULI kind of wraps up their work in the early fall to kind of feed in with the zoning regulations while the AKRF study kind of goes on um, past that point. And that was a brief presentation. Uh, any questions, I'm happy to go back. Um, any other questions you have, I'm happy to address. Thank you. I have a question, but I just wanted to note that um, Council Member Revoluz joined at 610 for the minutes. Um, so Steve, two questions for you. Um, I noticed in the timeline that you had showed, I don't know if you want to go back to it or not, you had um, noted community input, I think, at some point in the timeline, and I'm blanking on when it was. Is that the only time we'll, we'll have community input throughout this process, or are they part of the kickoff meeting as well? No, so there, there'll be um, a different touch points. We, we're we'll, we're going to put together a, a more master schedule, you know, specifically with the AKRF affordable housing study. They have several points in there where they'll have different public meetings along the way. We have to adjust it because by the time we actually sign the contract to when we thought we were starting, we're already a, a couple months behind that point. So yeah, there'll be there'll be several public meetings along with that. Um, both studies, you know, kind of the, the typical process is there, they do a lot of stakeholder interviews along the way. So they'll uh, talk to city officials, both um, in the, you know, staffing side, as well as the government side of things um, to get their input and see the things that they're doing. They'll also talk to, uh, you know, obviously, you know, for the the AKRF study, we, we plan on having the Housing Authority be an active participant in that because they're, you know, one of the principal drivers of some of the affordable housing that's going on. And then hopefully seek out other individuals in the affordable housing sphere to, to get their input and, and, and see what, what's happening, what's effective and what's not effective. Thank you. Um, and then the second question I had is you mentioned an advisory committee. Do we have any idea who will make up that advisory committee or how many people or how they'll be selected or anything? That That's starting to come together. We don't have names yet. Um, we started to put together like a skeleton of what that could look like. 
I would anticipate that, you know, since the good thing is that this, this is a subcommittee of council. So I would anticipate that, you know, one or two folks from council will be represented. And I would assume the logical landing spot would be from this group, would at least make sense to me, but that that's a decision to be made at a later date. Um, we, we talked about having uh, somebody from the Planning and Zoning Commission. We've talked about including the redevelopment agency. I mentioned housing authority. We also have um, probably we're looking at three to four people from just Norwalk residents to get their um, input because we want to get people that are actually affected by these issues as well to, to understand more the issues that they face and the day-to-day -day hurdles that they have. And, and then you know they, they have real world experience on what works and what doesn't work. So I, I, that's kind of like the rough framework on who will be. That's great. That sounds like a good mix of people. I'm looking forward to having more discussions about that. Does anybody else have any other questions? I think Chair Ayers is trying to speak, but you're breaking up again. Um, and then Nora has her hand raised, Councilmember Nijelski Eichner. Uh, Nicole, I think that's you, and you're breaking up. We can't hear you, Nicole. Okay, she dropped off. Um, Nora, did you have your hand raised? I did. Um, I just wanted to follow up on the questions that you were asking about public participation. Um, oh, did we lose Mr. Kleppen? It looks like we did, yes. <laughs> ah. We are really doing well technology. We are not tonight. doing well technology wise tonight, are we? <laughs> no. Hi everyone. I can do I can do my best to answer your um, question. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> okay, well it, it should be very straightforward. I believe there was a reference on the slide to surveys, and I um, just wanted to ask more generally, you know, are we going to be doing outreach beyond sort of the typical public meeting? Because we all know kind of the levels of input that we get from that, the likely, you know, we get the same sort of handful of people showing up relatively often. Um, so I was just curious about alternate outreach methods um, that it was sort of implied in your slides and I wanted to share with any details. Oh, Steve, you're muted. So I got kicked out of Zoom. I don't know if it showed that I got kicked out of Zoom. So I was gone for like two minutes. I, I totally apologize. But it I, did. And Jess was going to try to answer it. But maybe, <laughs> Nora, you can go yes. ahead and repeat your question since Steve's back. The answer is yes, for sure. Okay, um, the answer is definitely yes. So Steve, it, uh, it relates to feedback and um, collecting feedback from the public and creative ways to do that since in public meetings don't always bring out the most people and the most voices. But um, Nora, we actually have a meeting with uh, AKRF coming up um, next week to be able to talk with them about all of the ways in which they're going to be collecting information. And we know that the surveys, especially through social media, collect a lot of um, information. So, you know, Steve and I will work with them to, to let them know about some of the challenges that we have, like any other community collecting feedback. And so I think we'll have more information on that. But from the scope of work that we um, negotiated or Steve negotiated with them. They're definitely, they're doing the public meetings and outreach, but they've also mentioned surveys as well and then doing a lot of data collection. But the ULI folks as well are gonna be um, interviewing um, different stakeholders and having one-on-one -on -one interviews and doing group interviews as well, which should also really um, provide an interesting dynamic to be able to collect more um, qualitative information as well from residents who um, know that there is a housing gap and, and um, collecting ideas on ways in which the city should address it. Terrific, thank you. I figured but it's so good to, to have some details to fill that in. Um, and I'm looking for Okay, Nora, you're starting to break up too. Hey, Nora, if you can hear me, uh, we can't pick you out. All I was.
was saying was thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you I just wanted to make sure we didn't miss another question. Now, Nicole texted me and said that she wanted to know what the timeline was. I know Steve, you had put up um, sort of a summary of the timeline, but do you want to just take us through that um, in any detail you can? Sure. Let me just get, see if I can do that again. Hold on a second. Yeah, everything got messed up when that went offline. Mm -hmm. So in summary, I think um, AKRF is going to be starting their work in May, and they are anticipating a 12-month um, a to 14-month period of time. So I think the first three months are doing a lot of data analysis and kickoff meetings. The fourth month um, is their phase two, um, which I believe is, is community outreach. And then their phase three runs um, five to 10 months, which I think is incorporating what they've learned from the data side of the house and incorporating that to what they're hearing from the community feedback. And then the last month of their work um, relates to being able to pull it all together in a report for us. And then from a ULI standpoint, um, which is the broader housing conversation, we think that it, it makes sense to be able to have them come in September, which is after the data collection that's done by AKRF. AKRF is gonna be doing um, a housing needs assessment. So we would love for ULI to be able to receive all of the data from the housing needs assessment and be able to review all of that before they actually start their interviews um, with the, the folks in the community. And so um, we anticipate that that will probably happen sometime in September because we're also trying to avoid that sort of July, August summertime when a lot of people are away and out of the community. We want to make sure that we're bringing all that back in um, in September when more people are around. And the ULI um, is a three day service advisory panel. Um, or an advisory service panel, I guess you could call it. So they'll be here, the national experts will be here for three days interviewing, and they'll actually give us a presentation at the end of that three days. And then within um, two weeks after their visit, they will provide us with a report with all of the recommendations and the detail around the recommendations. Thank yeah, you. I, I just, yeah, one go ahead. quick, quick, quick point. Um, I, AKRF, in addition to the, so the things that we, we talked about, they're also planning on participating in um, some community events. So if we have like, we didn't get specific yet just because we wanted to look at where the calendars line up. But so, you know, for example, they, maybe they, they're at the Oyster Festival talking to folks and trying to get feedback from some, some events where they'll, they'll be out in the public in more like a one-on-one -on -one, um, conversational mode and getting data that way as well. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? I don't see any. Um, and we still don't have Nicole back. Um, going once, going twice. All right. Well, oh, go ahead, Council Member Revolution. Um, so I, I would was just gonna just blurt this out because I was just in a meeting about it too. And um, I'm just, this is literally just to be said to be on the record. Conversations about ownership. I know this is gonna just to blanket it. I know we're in this, I know, but conversations about ownership because we're having a cohort of, of people that we're gonna be discussing to. That's the part of the conversation. That's all just for the record, I'm trying to say. Like, we are having conversations about ownership. What, one thing I think is pretty, I'm, I'm hoping leads to some more home ownership that I'm happy to chat with you more about, or, or you know, it might take a different kind of conversation as well, is within the, the draft zoning regulations, we were proposing to shift some of the um, existing small lot zoning to uh, allow one or two family zoning. And we think, because we allowed the ADUs, which we talked about a lot, but the ADUs don't lead to additional home ownership. They provide a nice housing option, but not home ownership. But if you allow the two family versus the one family, that potentially could allow um, uh, home ownership for, for each unit. So it could be like a condo where I own half and then somebody else owns the other half. Doesn't mean that's the way it will happen, but it, the potential is there to allow increased home ownership because those unit individual units would be cheaper than somebody buying a single family house by itself. So yeah, why I say okay, thank you. That's great. But um 
why I'm even bringing that up, and again, just to bring it on the record, is the fact that I even, and I've said this a lot of times, ownership can look so many different ways, right? So like, it can be a condo, it can be co-ops, it can be multifamily, it can be a one family. So it's just, just having that conversation about how different ways of ownership melding into the ways of development that we're going into. That, that's what I'm basically saying. I think that just the ideal point of different ways in looking at ownership, um, that I just kind of want to drive home. You know what I mean? I just, re I really think it's just majorly important for our community to have this, um, especially for um, um, the constituents who might not normally get that ability to, because that's just at the end of the day, the longevity and the um, bread and butter to a community's longevity. You know what I mean? Um, I don't want to see us in a place of where we have all this beautiful development that is just going to end up imploding because all we have is just a commuting um, layout here. We don't have a space in place of developing um, longevity and family growth. So I think that I'm just putting it out there, just like I came from another meeting just now saying the same thing about like, and, and in particular, I would just say South Norwalk, just be, you know what I mean? But this is for all over. This is for our kids. This is for elderly who would be leaving a house and maybe just want to downsize to a condo that gives us still ownership. Um, and even in passing, maybe can be passed to the family or whatever if something happens. But that's what I'm saying. The idea of the different looks of ownership, if that makes sense. It makes sense. And I think that we have an opportunity to be able to really flag that for ULI and AKRF so um, that we can have them look at best practices in other communities and how they're supporting that. Um, but we'll definitely be talking to them about not only um, rental, but home ownership and, and the strength of home ownership and, and being able to address that from a policy standpoint. And I appreciate you, Jessica. You always do um, amazing art and these conversations. And again, you know, I just push this, but I'm literally just saying it again, just for record purposes of just, you know, the imports of the need for that in, in our, in the conversations. And that's all, that's really it. Absolutely. And I was on the prior conversation too, um, that prior meeting as well. So a lot of right. really good feedback and, you know, all of that will filter into these conversations, which I think will be really, obviously are extremely important. So, you know, it was good to be able to hear just a wide breadth of feedback and being able to, um, as Nora said, do outreach in really creative ways to be able to make sure that we're talking to as many people as we can, because everybody has different perspectives on it and different thoughts on it. And, um, but definitely heard you um, strong and clear about the home ownership. And I know others have been speaking a lot about that too, especially with the MLK work that we've been doing and thinking mm -hmm. about different ways to be able to support that. So you know, I feel like these groups are really going to be able to help us think about that. And I appreciate you again. I do. So that's the last I got to say, guys. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Um, Council member Nijelski Eichner, you have your hand raised. I do. Just um, following up on Diana's point, and on um, uh, Steve's reference to the change in the zoning regs, um, just a broader question, um, townhouses. So how do they fall into, so, you know, it still sounds to me like if we're doing two houses on a lot, that still probably doesn't allow for townhouses. Would that be correct? And what sort of zoning options would we have because townhouses strike me as, uh, you know, a, a potential um, option as you laid out, like the two-family homes, but even more so to create more houses at a, you know, potentially a lower um, price point. Yeah, I don't want to say the wrong thing, so I'd have to go back and look. But I, what I think we're talking about with the zoning is, uh, it, so it allows specific building types within the zones, but I think it allows duplexes, which would be, I guess, similar to a townhouse. But in the other zoning, the, the smaller multifamily zone, it does definitely allow the, the uh, more townhouse style on, on smaller lots, which we think is another potential way to um, bump up home ownership and in, in the number of different options as well. Okay. Yeah. And I don't want to put you on the spot. I know it's all still... Uh new and being worked through, but definitely something I want to keep an eye on um, as we go forward. So I'll look forward to asking you that question again as we take more into the zoning regulations. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, any further questions? All right, well, we look forward to continuing the conversation around this as it develops and the timeline moves forward. And we appreciate you coming and talking to us, Mr. Kleppen. Um, just going getting, to give everybody one last chance in case you have any other questions before we sign off. All right, then I will call for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you so much. All those in favor, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye.